Well, hello everyone, Greg here. Today I'm at the George W. Bush Presidential Library and Museum here in Dallas, Texas. I expect there to be some pretty interesting things inside of here, so let's get going. And here's a bunch of uh, signs and buttons and things like that over here. Didn't know they actually had a like a blueprint. Actually, looks like a blueprint. But uh, here's the buttons down here. Of course, I think that's my favorite W. <laughs> we are bound by ideals that move us beyond our backgrounds, lift us above our interests, and teach us what it means to be citizens. I almost kind of forgot how difficult it was during the election because of the whole recount thing, but here's a collection of newspapers that kind of show the whole path of finally becoming president after having to deal with so much of the hassle. Of course, it was all Florida's fault, and here's the, uh, the ballot that they would have had for Florida that messed everything up. Thank you so much, Florida. And here's a whole collection of hanging chads here that they were trying to determine whether Bush or Gore had won the presidency. There's President Bush and Laura Bush. And down here, more collection of memorabilia. I was not elected to serve one party, but to serve one nation. The President of the United States is the President of every single American, of every race and every background. Whether you voted for me or not, I will do my best to serve your interests and I will work to earn your respect. And then here's a collection of inaugural programs committees, all those exciting things that people do in politics, the inaugural luncheon invitation. These boots commemorate President Bush's time as the general managing partner of the Texas Rangers from 89 to 94. And here's the display of Bush's No Child Left Behind initiative. To every man and woman, a chance to succeed. To every child, a chance to learn. To every family, a chance to live with dignity and hope. T-ball on the South Lawn. Well, I don't think these are T-balls, but these are actually signed baseballs that were all given to President Bush. Let's see if we can see a good one here. Can't recognize the names, but a lot of these say, to George, my Navy, I don't know if that says my Navy pal or my Navy buddy. Oh, Don Mattingly, it says Don Mattingly there. A lot of signed baseballs. And then down here you've got a signed baseball bat signed by 46 of the 62 living members of the National Baseball Hall of Fame. It is the American story, an unfolding American promise that everyone belongs, that everyone deserves a chance, that no insignificant person was ever born. And this is my solemn pledge. I will work to build a single nation of justice and opportunity. And here's a collection of children's books. Laura Bush was a teacher and a librarian. This is the one that I recognize the most. And here's Laura Bush's dress. She, I'm not sure if she wore that at the inaugural or, but I, I think I've seen her wear this before, not just in this picture here. And then who could forget this moment of Andrew Card coming to President Bush and telling him about the September 11th attacks. And then over here is a piece of the World Trade Center. Oh no, I just got something emotional looking at this. And all along the wall here are all the names of the victims. Now I didn't lose any family in the attacks, but I was looking for a George. I didn't see one, but I saw Deanna Lynn Galante and her unborn child.
woman in a wheelchair and carried her down. Three floors, man. None of us will ever forget this day. Yet we go forward to defend freedom and all that is good and just in our world. To the children and parents and spouses and families and friends of the lost, we offer the deepest sympathy of the nation. This world he created is of moral design. Grief and tragedy and hatred are only for a time. Then it's remembrance and love. Now, some people might debate the whole fighting the global war on terror, but fact is, it happened. This is a historical event, so we still need to remember it for good or bad and try to learn from it. And this is a display of Saddam Hussein artifacts. What I remember most about all these are these cards that they gave out to the soldiers there so that they could track down some of these people. Of course, there's the most infamous of them all. And that there is Saddam Hussein's pistol captured with Saddam Hussein 13th of December, 2003. These scissors were used to perform the opening ceremony for the U.S. Embassy in Kabul. And here's some letters. And here's a letter from Condi Rice, Condoleezza Rice. Mr. President, Iraq is sovereign. Letter was passed from Brummer at 1026 a.m. Iraqi time. President Bush signed it, <laughs> let freedom reign. And here's a letter from an Iraqi woman thanking President Bush. Free people will set the course of history. And this is a rather impressive table here, giving you information about the different areas, what's going on in, like say, Afghanistan. Understanding the situation. Play a video here, what's going on. And this globe charts the democracies in the world based on the year. So you can go to 2008, hit that button. Or you can go to 1989, hit that button. And it will show the democracies in the world at that time. And this is President Bush's personal Bible that he read daily in the White House. And here's a letter from his daughter, Jenna. And this is a Port Authority of New York in New Jersey police officer badge. And here's some Medal of Honors that were given out by President Bush. And here's a display called Commander in Chief with some more medals and letters down here. And here's a Presidential Medal of Freedom that was given out by President Bush. And here's a display of bicycle and some basketball, soccer ball, football, baseball, Little League baseball, of teams that visited the White House. Here we have a display of Air Force One memorabilia, including President Bush's jacket and Laura Bush's jacket. 
Travels on Marine One as well. The right leader at the right time. Never forgotten. I like this little picture of the dog. I forget the dog's name. <laughs> Looking out at at uh, Marine One there on the lawn. That's right. It was Barney. Barney is the dog's name. And here's a statue of Barney. Barney's White House. <laughs> And then here is a recreation of the Oval Office. This is so cool. And then here's a recreation of the famous desk. I believe it's called the Resolute Desk. Now the paintings on the wall would have been just like the ones that were in the Oval Office while President Bush was here. You got uh, Abraham Lincoln here. You've got the Alamo. And the state flower of Texas, bust of Abraham Lincoln, portrait of George Washington, which is always here. And here's the bust of Winston Churchill. This kind of became a little, little uh, point of contention there for a while. Couch. And this is the photographs that were behind President Bush at the desk. All right, I'm gonna sit in the chair. I think I'm allowed to sit in the chair. Here's the phone. I could call Crawford. Just Crawford, Texas in general, nothing specific. <laughs> well, here's behind the desk. This is something you probably never see. What's behind the desk? One last look inside the Oval Office here. We head out to the small rose garden area. And the tour guide was saying that this is a, a recreation of the walkway that President Bush would take from his quarters over to the Oval Office, which would be over this way. And inside of there, and over here is a smaller recreation of the rose garden the president would come out this way and then walk into that area to the oval office this feels very familiar even though i've never <laughs> never been here before i've seen this kind of similar similar setup at the actual white house before i mean i've never been to the real white house but this is what it's like similar very similar yep just heading to work heading to work gotta get in there and Sign them laws. Let's get going. Come on, Barney. Let's go. No, this is a little Barney memorial. I guess he liked this volleyball. Must have been his favorite thing. Barney Bush. He's a cute little Yorkie. And dear Barney, I've heard that you are a well-behaved dog in the White House. Sometimes could you send me a picture of yourself? <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Liberty is the right and hope of all humanity. This line is guarding the rest of the museum. And this area of the museum seems to be dedicated to shining a light on the First Lady and world travels and things of that nature. Building a hopeful world. And this is a theater that allows you to make decisions as if you were the president. And, you know, a lot of times you got to make these decisions quickly. There's not a lot of of um, time to be you know mulling things over you gotta you gotta you gotta do it sometimes it doesn't always work out but a lot of times it does and then here's a hurricane katrina display here crisis management very difficult problem to have to deal with katrina's destructive path and then here's a display of protecting the environment. This is an interesting table for 
not sure what you're supposed to do with these parts. I think you, you probably put them on the display here and uh, it shows you different things. Put that there. Or put it, put it right there. <laughs> 80% of drinking water contains microplastics? No. No, I didn't know that. Sure. I should? I should know that? It's pretty neat. You put the object on the screen and rotate it to see different, different things. We should. So as we head kind of towards outward of the museum, you see here's a line, President, January 20, 2009, walking into being citizen again. The center will be the focus of our attention, the place where we pursue our passions and the forum for our public service for the rest of our lives. Now we go forward, grateful for our freedom, faithful to our cause, and confident in the future of the greatest nation on earth. And then adjacent to the presidential library is a collection of paintings that George W. Bush himself painted. And I recognize this fellow right away, Albert Pujols. President Bush painted a portrait of one of my favorite baseball players. significantly recognizable figure that's right Arnold wearing a red white and blue hat much like Uncle Sam Uncle Arnold in the ceiling there's just hundreds thousands probably of immigrants being plastered all over the wall here all right everybody from the george w bush library and museum thank you for watching hope you take care always remember the adventures in you Bye-bye, everybody. And I forgot to show this, but they give you a, a brochure with a map of the entire museum here. Pretty nice little brochure here that they give you. And here's the map of the entire museum. All right, that's it.